Okay, you guys, so this is a really exciting technique that I want to show you today. I'm gonna to show you how to draw white whiskers. It can also be applied to, in some cases, blonde hair or white hair on a human. And sometimes I also use this technique when I'm drawing grasslands or prairie lands if I want to have some light areas. So let's take a look at a couple of examples and then I'm going to sort of explain the technique and then I'll demonstrate it for you. So in this drawing that I did, and I know her eyes are a little bit wonky. This was one of the first portraits that I did a while back um, when I started drawing people again. I don't have a pencil. What's going on? So I'm going to grab a pencil so I can point. Her hair is really blonde right here. And I could use this technique on that light area. You don't know what the technique is yet, so it's kind of a little bit confusing, but let me show you a couple more examples. I could also use this technique here on this white hair. I wouldn't want to use it on a larger area of white hair because it would start to look a little bit dented and funny, but in small areas of white hair, this technique can be really helpful. And um, in grasslands, let's turn this sideways so you can see it. Um, I did use this technique here in the grass area. And there are moments where you can, if we could zoom in, you could see it actually right here. And you can see it right here too. Um, it's hard to see probably from the camera, but in, the, um, in person you would be able to see it. And I could use it here in these grasslands too. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to deboss the page. So I want to show you an image here. Um, so debossing is the opposite of embossing. So we often think of embossing where we're raising the paper up by pressing something from below it. Debossing is the opposite where you're going to compress the paper down by putting pressure on top of it. So you can see that I did that here with this post-it note. What I'm going to do is take a tool. I'm going to take a tool and compress the paper. And then when I draw over it, you're going to see these little dented lines that show up that won't take any value that I'm shading over top of it because of that compression or debossing. So the tools that I tend to use are these sets of tools. I either use, this is called the bone folder and there's a little bit of a point here. Sometimes I'll use a small ruler and you can see that these two are different because this one has a little bit of a curved edge whereas this one has a very right angle, sharp edge. So those will impact the paper differently. Sometimes if I've gone to stay at a hotel and I forgot to turn in the key, or if I have an old credit card that I'm not using, I'll use that curved edge of the credit card too. And that's going to help. And the other tool for something really thin to get really thin whiskers that I'll use is um, a guitar pick. So this one was given to me um, in some sort of swag bag. I'm not a guitar player, but it's so much thinner. Can you see the difference between that thickness and this thickness? Or say the thickness of the ruler or the thickness of the credit card. So you can get different amounts of thickness for the pressure on your page. And it really helps to have that variation. For today, um, I'm going to use, let's see, I think I'm going to use the sharp edged ruler because that's probably what you're most likely to have. So now I've got this image here of um, Poncho. He is a dog that is available for adoption. He's at the Austin um, Animal Shelter and you can go to, I'll um, put a link below to his page if he's still available for adoption. Um, you can go find out more about him online. And so I wanted to draw him so that you guys could see how many cute animals we have available for adoption. And over here, you can see that he's got some white whiskers. On this side, he's got dark whiskers. 
<clears throat> so what I'm going to do is take this corner of my um, sharp ruler and I'm going to place it right where I want the whisker to go and I'm going to sort of press hard and dent. And I'm just going to do a couple here so that you guys get an example. And then I'm going to opt for a little bit of a softer pencil, so I would say a 2B and above. If you go for a harder pencil, it usually compresses the page and um, you'll find that it's a little bit harder to see the results. And if I shade over top here, you should see some white spaces emerging. So sometimes this is a little bit less effective if I'm using a really thin piece of paper. Okay, so I'm starting to see the results, but it's a little bit thinner of a whisker than I might want because my paper is so thin or because of the tool that I chose to use. Let's see what it would look like if I did a wider tool. Let's see, I need to go for a blank spot. So if I use a wider tool and do a whisker, you can see that one showing a little bit more. Hopefully my head is not blocking your view. So sometimes the wider tool is going to be better. The other thing that sometimes is more effective is if you're using a higher quality paper. So this is just my, let's see. This is my Strathmore sketch and it's the recycled sketch. It is, um, does it have the pound? It's 60 pound paper. So that's relatively thin. The sketch paper is relatively thin. You'll also notice that what I did was I had it on the cardboard of the back end of the um, paper pad. I don't want to have it resting on my paper because check this out. Let's do one with the bone folder. Say I want to do a whisker here and shade over it. What's likely to happen is that I'm likely to have that same whisker up here on the next page where I don't want it because I'm probably not drawing the same thing on the next page. So you can see it. I hope it's clear enough for you to see it, but it's right there. So it can dent through several layers of paper that you don't intend for it to do. The best way to do this, I think, is to use a higher quality paper. So this is a cotton paper. It's Stonehenge. It um, originally was a printmaking paper and now I love this company so much because they have made it into small paper pads. So if I wanted to do some small whiskers on this, you'll see a much higher quality availability of that whisker and that dent because this paper is so much thicker. It's much more forgiving and it's got a lot more cush to it. And I don't have to worry about it denting the next page because this is so thick. So your best bet is to use this method with higher quality paper like your Stonehenge, but you can still use it on your sketch paper. You can see examples where I did that at the beginning of the video. Um, remember it's going to work for white whiskers, for white hair, sometimes for blonde hair for humans and then also for grasslands and prairies. And I'm sure that there's some other place that you could use this method intentionally that I just haven't thought of yet. So if you have any ideas, let me know down below. And um, hopefully you guys have a couple of odds and ends like rulers and old credit cards or guitar picks lying around. If you don't have that, you can also purposefully buy tools that are debossing tools. Um, so let me know if you need help finding some different tools, but I'm sure that you have things in your junk drawer or just lying around that you can try this out with and let me know how it goes. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, LZM Studio, where I frequently release quick tips and all kinds of different ideas about drawing. 
Also check out my Facebook and my Instagram page. I like to show um, photographs of my artwork, of my students' artwork, and share funny stories from my students on those pages. And then check out my website, lzmstudio.com, where you're going to find more inspiration and um, full-length, detailed tutorials. Thank you.